Yeah, let's get it, man. Let's get it popping, man. Ooh, welcome, man. Welcome back to the freaking channel. That's right, guys. It's your host, JT, the freaking car guy. All right. Yes, I'm not your normal, everyday YouTube mechanic, okay? In fact, I don't believe in the normals. In fact, I'm going to break all the norms, okay? There ain't no more norms, all right? There's nothing super professional about I keep it real. Let me put it that way. All right. Y'all saw the title, man. I'm late, so I'm jumping right into it. How long does it take to figure out what the hell is wrong with the car? Now, lately, I have uploaded a couple of controversial videos. Not so much controversial, but they seem to generate a lot of buzz, a lot of talk. I have no problem with that part. The part I have a problem with is when people don't understand what the hell they talking about. Okay, yeah, you got to understand, you just can't blurt out stuff, man. You just can't. How long does it take? You don't know what you're doing if you didn't figure it out that quick. If it only takes five minutes, you shouldn't get paid nothing. Just tighten it up and give it back to the customer. Oh, my God. Do you know how many people, do you know how many businesses were shut down with some of y'all mentality? I Guys, I get it when you mix passion with reality. Okay. Yes. There's a level of passion. We all going to have <laughs> There's a level. Of, I cannot throw grandma over the curb, over the cliff. Go on grandma. I need your money. You got grandkids. Go get some money from them. No, there's a level of passion. Everybody's going to have when it comes to this. It's just, you can't let it mix. You can't leave your feelings at home in some cases. Okay. And a lot of you guys not real good at siphoning out, you know, scammers. The guy with the freaking stop leak in his radiator. That guy had ill intentions. And y'all just in the comment, you ought to be shaming yourself for that poor guy. That guy was not freaking poor. That guy know what the hell he was doing. He was trying to get us to attempt any kind of repair to that car. If I had made any kind of, you should read the comments in that video. Oh my God, you don't know how to flush a radio? What do you mean? A radiator. What do you mean you ain't going to flush the radiator? You don't know how to flush a radiator? You shouldn't be a mechanic. Like, do y'all hear yourself? Do y'all know what I'm dealing with? Okay. This guy know what the hell he doing. He know he put that stuff in that damn radiator and didn't tell us nothing to try to see if we attempt. A Just imagine if I was a rookie mechanic and that car was dispatched to me. Oh, all I need is a flush. Because that's the bulk of the comments I'm getting. You stupid, JT. All you got to do is flush it and it'll be all right. No, man. You have to have been in this game a long enough time to know, to understand risk, guys. There's a level of risk and stuff like that. I have been there and done that. I don't plan on going back. I ain't going back. All right, so I know what to look out for and what not to look out for. Okay. Yes, it was fairly quick that I saw the additive in the radiator, but I still had a job to do. I still have to diagnose the car. The complaint was the engine is overheating. It's my job to find out why. After pressure testing and looking over and find out why the pump was leaking. All he had to do was get the water pump fixed. No, no, you want to go to AutoZone and go in that aisle with a mechanic in a can aisle, that mechanic in a can section. Let me see, mechanic in a can. You don't need no damn mechanic, dog. Just put this in your radiator and you don't need no more water pump. Oh, really? It's guaranteed? Boop, 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 boop. Three hours later. He had the shop trying to figure out why his car overheat. All right, but that ain't what this is about. I guess I saw a ridiculous, a super ridiculous, the most ridiculous comment I've ever seen. Y'all know me. I read all my comments, right? I saw the freaking, what up, Grady Morgan? What up, Trina Walker? What up, Shade Tree Tech? Nothing. I get back. Hold on. I saw the most ridiculous comment I've ever seen in a long freaking time. And this is from a cool dude, too, uh, Mike P. I know Mike P. Uh, Mike P is one of those. YouTubers, YouTube guys that watch videos and active on the videos. In other words, he watched just about everything you upload. Man, he chances are he's going to comment. YouTubers love people like Mike P, right? But from time to time, Mike P can say some dumb shit, okay? Case in point. Now, again, I got no problem with Mike P. He's the ultimate. YouTubers are looking for guys like Mike P, you know, active on the channel. Active. Mike watch all the videos. Mike, always in the comment section. I'm like, Mike P, what's popping, man? JT, I love you, man, but you you wrong on this one, dog. That's the thing, man. There's nothing wrong. You're not going to agree with everything I put out or everything I say. This dude, Jimmy, the biggest hater on freaking YouTube. 
he don't agree with and, and it's funny because the stuff he do agree with he won't say he agree with all right so he one of those low-key you all right with me guy you know i only hear from him when it's some questionable stuff I, anyway mike p where you at mike p probably ain't in here but if he is i hope he's listening because i'm about to put him on spot guys i gotta hurry up let me get through this mike p all right guys this is a comment in question i want y'all to look at something right here y'all see this this is the video I uploaded today speaking about how long does it take? That's why this topic came about. What's up, PT Lover? Julius Jones, Dad's Garage. What's up, 69 Dark Man? Guys, Mike P, my buddy. I like Mike P. Mike P, cool with me. But Mike P says some of the, one of the, all right. Okay. The question was, I assume, um, if it take me five minutes to diagnose this car, should I still get paid my hour? I'm not going to keep debating it with y'all. The answer is freaking yes. <laughs> All right. It's a flat fee. Okay. And one guy I want to throw up. One guy I want to be nosy. Well, how much you get out of that 200? Ain't none of your damn business. What well, I negotiated with the boss as far as my hourly rate. Some of y'all are so damn cocky. Y'all think y'all can just say any old damn thing to me. Wait a minute. I got feelings. I'm human. I got sometimes I, <laughs> sometimes I cry. <laughs> Not now, though. Okay, listen, Mike P, you wrong, man. Look, here's Mike P comment. It takes you three out. No, if it takes you three hours to diagnose a problem on a car, maybe you need to find a profession. So, I'm what I get out of that is, um, from based off what I said in the video was, um, it don't matter if it take me five minutes or three hours, I should get paid the same. This is Mike P comment. Now, based on this comment, in fact, let me see what these other two people said. Um. Uh, you are obviously not a mechanic <laughs> and you are obviously right. Mike P can't be a mechanic talking like that. All right. What's this other one? Mike Perman. Yo, have you ever like had to use your brain to solve a problem before? Sometimes shit take less than obvious guys. It could take between, let me say this. It can take between three hours or three months. <laughs> yes. Guys, there have been times where I literally push a car in or no start shouldn't take that long in fact most of the no starts i diagnose outside okay it's not coming inside until it's approved and ready for me to work on yeah that's how precious my two stalls are i don't want to lock them down on nothing i it depend on the severity of the complaint right a no start i can check fuel pressure i can see if i'm getting fuel i can a lot of stuff we can do outside guys i mean i'm a multitasker i can do i can walk and chew gum at the same time my point is um if i bring it if i push it tow it pull it in the shop damn it it's a hard problem all right because normally jt figure that out outside I mean, in fact i've gone so far as to put fuel pumps on outside mm -hmm. the ones that's in the seat <laughs> yeah not the ones you gotta drop yeah i gotta go to the back seat the charge isn't a challenge you know you just pull the back seat and put the fuel pump in that way so yeah uh but if i bring it in the shop if i tow it in the shop it's a hard problem now me doing my thing I only got an hour allocated. Right. I hear y'all crying about if it take five minutes, you shouldn't charge them nothing. But I'll never hear anybody crying about, hey, man, it took me three hours, man. I need some more money. I don't see nobody in the comment discussing that, that part there. Like, because you know why? Y'all under the impression that it shouldn't take no more than an hour. Guys, we are human. Okay. Cars are man-made. Cars going to have problems that can't be solved in five, ten freaking minutes. Or that hour that's allocated for it. So, if it take me three hours, I only getting paid an hour. All right. Now I'm not finna dig into that because I've already hit home on that. Okay. I'm losing my butt off at this time. In the meantime, all the other approvals are stacking up over there. I got parts sitting over there, tickets sitting over there. JT, when you gonna get to my gravy tune up? When you gonna get to that gravy? Four wheel brake job, JT, huh? You over here playing around with this no start. Yeah, Cause I don't know what's wrong with it. I got spark, fuel, compression. I got everything. It still won't start. I got engineers on the line. I got Chrysler himself on the line. And Chrysler can't tell me. I don't know nothing, man. You know what? <laughs> I'm pushing this damn thing outside. I need some gravy. I need to pay my light bill. Yeah, there have been times. The longest I've had a car, guys, actually 30 days. All right. That's because the boss man got on my butt. What the hell going on? I push it outside, boss. Why? Boss, I don't know what the hell wrong with it. What you mean, yo? You JT the car guy. You ANC suit. Oh, y'all see that? Fluff dog. Fluffy in here. I got fluff Mexican mechanic wear on, guys. Y'all like that? I got to get my patch on. Anyway, I'm all that in a bag of chips, right? But I don't know what the hell wrong with this car. Let me finish. Okay. Uh, what's up? Uh, 
Jason Picaro on the building. Hold on. Listen, let me finish my story. Oh, um, and why I leave off at? Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with it. So I push it outside. Boss was like, look, man, this customer's calling me. She needs to know something. I'm like, when you gonna tell her? I can I need to know something. I don't know nothing. I got injured with guys. There's a hotline we call when we stuck. All right. I don't build these freaking cars. Okay. I need to talk to the guy that designed the software or design the programming or design the car. <laughs> I need to talk to the builder. I need to talk to the engineer that, you know, that sat down with the blueprints and built this down. Look, man, what the hell? I got 12 volts going here. I ain't got nothing coming out of here. The book said replace the PCM. <laughs> We already did that. Okay, now what, Mr. Nordahl? I done spent $1,000. Remember, I ain't, I'm the type that don't like wasting money. I put a PCM on for nothing. Good thing it was under warranty. But listen, it's misdiagnosed. It happens. My point is to Mike P, there's no set time on how long it take to figure out what's wrong with a car. Now, this is why shops always go after guys with experience. This is where experience come into play. A guy with experience say 20 years experience there's a slight slim chance that he have seen this problem before and he know where to go as opposed to a guy fresh out of college with asc master super tech i'm the baddest in the world i pass every test in the book but he ain't seen no problems because he don't have no years stacked up under his experience level he got one year experience fresh out of college book smart all right to make the kind of guys you want to give that car to I, I get it. I get it. So that's why shops always seek out guys with experience. I have experience, but there are sometimes it's still. Yeah. So long story short, I finally end up figuring it out. But my point to Mike P is there's no set time on how long it can take to figure out what's wrong with a car. It's just not. All right. I, it just not, man. Dude, I'm going to tell you all something. I, we, we are big fans of going by the diagnostic book, the diagnostic tree, especially if you got a fault code. Imagine this day and age, you got a problem with a car. Imagine your car sitting there doing this. Look, 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 look. You look in the dash, ain't no check in the light. I'm going, are you telling me this computer haven't picked up anything wrong with this guy? Good guys, keep in mind, whether you know it or not, we rely on that computer, that check engine light to at least put us in the right direction. You see what I'm saying? That's the sole purpose of a fault code, a trouble code, to put the mechanic in the right direction. It is not, it is not, uh, it is not one of those, yes, replace this, EGR circuit low. It is not a replace the EGR circuit, EGR because I got a code for, code for EGR circuit low. That's not what it's saying. The direction is, putting me in the direction of the EGR valve. Now I need to check this, that, and another. A lot of guys will misread trouble codes into believing I need to park. O2 sensor votes high. Must need an O2 sensor. Put it on. O2 sensor votes high. Now what? <laughs> now what? What the hell? That's why I say, guys, just because the part name is being called out in the code does not necessarily mean the part is the issue. The job of a check engine light, the computer onboard diagnostic system, is to help put the mechanic in the right direction. All right. Yeah. To help speed up diagnostic. The book, the diagnostic is on our side. Manufacturers want us to figure this stuff out because at the end of the day, they want to keep their customers happy. But nobody want bad press or oh, Chrysler pizza junk. Can't nobody figure out what the hell wrong with it. Bring it to JT. He'll figure it out. It may take him some while, but damn it, he'll figure it out. Now, I'm, I'm interested to know, because I got to get to the comment section. I'm interested to know. I tried to look some of this up early, but I got mixed up with time. I want to know what the hell Google says about, or oh, what are some of the, y'all know Google's nothing but an input data, right? If the computer keeps yelling, you just let them go. <laughs> no, if the customer keeps yelling, you just let them go. Yeah, the customer won't know what the hell wrong. Sometimes it's warranty, so you, that's not an option. I want to know what the computer, how long does it take to diagnose a car problem? Let's see what someone is saying. A standard diagnostic can take about an hour to an hour and a half. Of course, more complicated problems that require further diagnosis may take more. Depend. Yeah, that's obvious. All right. Uh, anything else on here tricky? How do mechanics find out what's wrong with your car? Uh, your car computer produces a code alongside the check. And they're like, yeah, what I just spoke about. Okay, again, guys, it's only there to put you in the right direction. It's not going to tell you what the problem is. What's up, sleeper? All right, so the sort, mechanics carrying out the test will typically plug a diagnostic scanner into the car to read the trouble codes 
and translate them into actionable information. Y'all get that? That's exactly what I just spoke about. Okay. The second amendment wasn't a suggestion. How much does it usually cost to fix a hemi tick? Give me a second, dude. I'm about to come over there. Mopar Randy, what's popping, man? Let's do one more, guys. A couple more. How long is too long for my car to be in a shop? <laughs> this should be interesting. <laughs> Regardless of if your car is new or used, the car dealership has 30 days, guys. So I once had a car three months, okay? Did I exceed <laughs> the limit? And guys, again, I pushed it outside because I need a refresher. Guys, don't know who go behind me. There's nobody in the shop that can technically. Well, there is a manager can try another. Sometimes you need a fresh brain. So I'm not going to sit here and make it look like the book stopped with me. No, <laughs> everybody in our shop is sharp as shit, man. Sharp as hell. Okay. Everybody can figure, but everybody need a refresher. This guy's call me over there or come over to my store, JT. Let me pick your brain for a minute. That's the lingo we use. Hey, man, let me pick your brain, man. I, because all we need is an extra push or a refresher, a real quick refresher. All right. In some cases, we are so freaking advanced, we will overlook the simple stuff like a fuse being blown. Yes, we wonder why we ain't got power to such and such. And we fail to remember or fail to think about the fact that the circuit is protected by a 20 amp fuse that, if blown, will render you no power at that circuit that you're testing. So, yeah, we got to slow down sometime and we need a refresher. We'll go over to a buddy and find out uh, if he's seen this problem before. All right, one more. How long should I wait to call my mechanic? <laughs> your mechanic got your car over two or three days. You might want to call him. A week is fine, but there is 99% chance it's not even close. Um, engine replacement takes a long time. Okay, that's for engine replacement. Can AutoZone diagnose the problem? This is a good one, guys. I, I can answer this, but I want to see what Google say. If your check engine light is on and you are wondering why, head down to your local AutoZone. Well, one of their store clerks can help. This is worded wrong. They can't help you diagnose nothing, man. They can tell you what the code is and they can guess at what it is can help diagnose the issue through our free fix finder service yes they have this service that they can pull up just say for instance if they pull up a code po302 that stands for misfiring cylinder 2 they little data box gonna lead you to spark plugs core and whatever that data box is gonna fail to mention that you probably need to run a compression test because if that compression in cylinder 2 is low all bets all nothing to matter new spark plugs or not none of it's going to matter what car issue takes the longest to fix that's dumb what can i do if my car is taking too long to repair Ooh, you have options man but you really don't want to stop and go to another mechanic because the guy that's on it probably got so much stuff apart yeah it could be a mess you don't want to cross mechanics like that especially at the time right now how long is too long for mechanics should you negotiate with a mechanic how do you say no to a mechanic how often do people take their car to a mechanic? How long does it take AutoZone to scan your car? Another dumb one. These are dumb. All right. Uh, my The moral of the story, guys, is what I'm trying to say. Is Mike P. I love you, dude. You're my home biscuit skillet. But that comment was a little uh crazy. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Don't sugarcoat it, JT. That was a crazy-ass comment. Mike P., shame on you. All right. I'm done. What's going on, people? How y'all doing? I saw Jason in the building. What's up, Jason? Why are you JT this Jaguar? He said, oh, my goodness, Jaguar. You called the wrong person, Jason. <laughs> Jason, even though I got all of this, all of that, y'all see my little, hey, I got all AFC. I got Super Tech Award, Master Tech of the Year, Muscles, a damn fluff dog, Mexican T-shirt on, shades on. Even though I got all of that, I don't know what the hell going on with that Jaguar. Mm. Yeah, Jason, I'm sorry. I can't help you, fella. Uh, yeah, it's one of those days. South Park, KOs, what's going on? Guys, y'all know I play a lot, but I just had to hit that home right quick. Uh, let me try to speak to a few folks. Y'all know how I roll? Uh, what's up? Dark man, Lakeside and Motor. What's up, man? How are you? South Park was popping. Okay, Doc Man said I was late. As long as I need to figure out the issue, Uncle J Mobile Auto Repair. Uncle J into that mobile stuff. I got mad respect for anybody that's a mobile mechanic because JT can't do it. All right, what's up, Nate? How's it going, man? Shade Tree 
in the building. All right, what's going on, man? Octavia, what up, JT? Happy Sunday. What is going on? Trina Walker, hey, JT, the car guy. What's going on? My Baba Siki, high school mate. She wasn't a classmate. She was a high school mate. We went to high school together down yeah, in Wabi City, Arkansas. What up, Grady Morgan? How are you, man? Nice shirt. Yeah, you like that? Fluff dog, fluffy Mexicanic. All right, that's my dude, man. If I catch somebody talking. One guy came over here and said some bad stuff about Fluffy. Like, I don't know if he was expecting me to join him or he was expecting me to jump on the badge fluff dog bandwagon, but I'm like, player, it ain't happening, man. What are you doing? What? What's, what's really going on? What's the problem? And I went to his channel to see if he's some kind of mechanic. You know, from time to kind of time, mechanics will uh, create beef, okay, amongst each other. Y'all want to know who got the most beef, most beef going right now? Uh, CP the two at it. <laughs> CP got so many enemies out there. I'm like, wait a minute, man. Yeah, I'm cool with CP. All right, it's, it's, it's okay. Like, you down with CP? Let me know right now. Hey, man, is CP all right with me? CP, I ain't ever had no problem with CP. Well, you can't be down with CP, but... It's a free country. Yes, I can. The man ain't done nothing to me. Ain't saying nothing bad about me. He cool with me. CP, do your thing, bro. All right? That's all I got to say about that. But, yeah, from time to time, channels would beef with one another. Some of it is real. Some of it is not. The point is, I went to his channel to see if he was one of those guys that's trying to initiate. Sometimes that can create controversy, guys. Uh, it's intentional. All right? But, yeah, he ain't got a damn channel. I'm like, you wasting fluff dog time at this point. He could be editing videos and putting out more content, but he can't spend no time going back and forth with a nobody. Technically, dude, you are nobody. Like, you are nobody. Like, you don't even deserve to be. What you doing, man? Leave Fluff. What? Hey, it ain't like that. All right? No, we're not, we're not going to uh, mess with Fluffy Mexicanic. All right? Mm -mm. Simple way to shut him up. Flat rate for diagnosing vehicle issue. Oh, uh, Okay. It takes what it takes. Yes, sir. What up, Joshua? How are you? Julius. Josh, Julius Jones. I'm sorry. Uh, my tag and I have a deal. I pay exactly what time he spends. That's the thing. Negotiate PT level. 15 minutes is 15 minutes. Right? PT level. All of that should be done in the beginning. Just what you're saying. All right? It's nothing like you taking your car to the shop. The guy tell you, all right, ma'am, as long as you understand, that's going to be a $200 diagnostic fee. Right then and there. Hear me out. Mm -mm. Do we see eye to eye? Hear me out. Right then and there is the perfect time for you to complain. $200? Wait a minute. Oh, you're going to do it or not? Okay. I need to get it checked out. Okay. So you don't wait till after the diagnosis is done and then go, wait a minute, $200? Wait a minute. You didn't say that. Yes, I did. Look, right here. You signed it. It's signed right here. You, you knew all about it. Okay, so PT, I get it. That is the time to negotiate that stuff is at the beginning. Now, at the beginning, if she says she ain't got that much, I don't know what the option is at that point. Because when you're dealing with a company, rules are rules. You can't be in the rules. You can't say, just because you cute, ma'am, you real cool. And you, damn, ain't no women in here. Is it? You, you tight. You fine. I'm going to give you a 50% discount but I need to get your phone number. You can't do that in a big corporate place, man. You get your ass fired. You get Ken. You be gone. You can't just be negotiating dates and go out with me and all that with a pretty girl because, you know, she ain't got the full $200. It is what it is. So, yeah, PT, that's the perfect time to do that. Uh, negotiate with the guy that's working on your vehicle. Some cars take minutes. Some take dad's garage. He's out there in the field. Dads know what I'm talking about. All right. You should see the glee on mechanics face when they figure something out quickly. Now, let me say this, because I was going to make a short video on this. A lot of people on that video are saying, why didn't you check the gas cap first? All right. Remember now, I get the ticket, check engine light on. Now, guys, some cars will illuminate a check gas cap light. All right. Some cars have that feature. That's when you check the gas cap first. All right. The mere fact that I had to hook my scan to up to find out the code based off the check engine light being on is where the diagnostic clock runs. And it's not you got not getting paid for it running. You getting paid. The diagnostic is already approved. All right. Now, let me get back to my point, because some people say you're a big dummy. You should have checked the cap first. And if it was loose, tighten it up and get a customer a car back and let her go. No, man, don't work like that. Imagine I did this. 
I pull that car in the shop, scan it, P0456, small e lean. It's the easiest thing. Let me check the gas cap. What do you know? It's loose. Click, click, click. Based on y'all comments, I'm supposed to jump back in the car, turn the light out, and give the customer a car. Thank you, ma'am. Have a nice day. Don't be stupid next time. Next time, just make sure you click it, okay? Click it or tick it. That way, the light won't come on. Have a nice day. No charge, no charge, no charge. Now, you know the risk behind that? Number one, you didn't check the system for leaks because you told you so interested in guys you might sometimes you gotta leave your feelings at home depend on where you at depend on if you're working for a freaking boss that don't give a damn about nothing and you have a job to do i have a little leeway at brothers motors or the other two shops i work at i got a lot of leeway in fact i interact with the customers personally but at certain places i'm at there's no interaction okay yeah so Sometimes you got to leave your feelings at home and do your job. I cannot click that thing back on and get a customer in the car back. Imagine she come back, P0456 again. But JT, why is it back on again? I don't know. Last time her gas cap was loose. Let me see what's wrong now. Oh, she really got a leak. But the guys in the comment was telling me I should just click the gas cap and get a customer her car back. Well, who the hell are you listening to? Them guys in the them know nothing Mike P's in the comment section? No, you listen to us. You do your freaking job. And here's what my job should have been in that case. Scan that car. Once I see the code, don't touch nothing. Here's the secret. Here's the catch. Don't touch a damn thing because what you can do is mask the problem, right? Your goal is to find out is there actually a leak. That's what the smoke test is put in place for. Set up your machine. Run the smoke test. The ball won't drop. What do you know? I got a leak. Now look for the freaking leak. First place you should check. Obvious. The fuel cap. My ball not dropping. Just the exact same way I did in that video. I open the door. What do you know? Smoke coming out. I turn the gas cap. Click, click, click. Smoke go away. Needle drop. It's confirmed. That was the leak. You cannot determine what the leak was if you never run a leak test. So for all of you guys out there, you knucklehead clowns out there going, he didn't, all he had to do was tighten the gas cap. That took five minutes. Why should he get to pay $200 an hour? Number one, it's a flat rate fee. And number two, I'm just different, okay? I'm cut from a different cloth, all right? I'm not your normal everyday mechanic. In fact, I will destroy the norm, all right? Ain't no more normal YouTube mechanics out there when I get done with it, all right? I got a lot of stuff coming out. A lot of I'm about to change the game, damn it. But my point is, guys, some, and these, some, of the, some of the guys that comment this stuff is like, I ain't calling out no names, but I like I was once thinking they pretty sharp. But for them to suggest I should have just tightened it up and give it back to the customer, have a nice day. No, man, you don't know. You don't know what the hell the leak was. You have no idea if you fixed anything. Last thing I need for that car to come back and I look bad. Recheck. JT got to recheck. I know, man. I should have checked that mother for a leak. God, something told me to not listen to them clowns in the comment section. <laughs> Let me stop because I love them clowns. Uh, y'all know who you are. Some of y'all, ooh, some of y'all are pretty. Oh, but y'all know who you are. Y'all cool with me though. Listen, man. My point is, again, I'm gonna say this again. I'm not your normal everyday mechanic, so don't come to me with the okie doke. I went to freaking Harbor Freight. I went to Harbor Freight to get them. Uh, I called it a micrometer. Guys in the comment, it's a caliber, you idiot, and you checking it wrong. I'm like, <clears throat> I had to catch myself. First of all, player. Let me say something. I, I'm just merely comparing the lobes, the lobe that got the scratch on it to the other. One. And this is a 60 second video, meaning I have 59 seconds. OK, <laughs> technically. Right. So I'm going to put my caliper that I just bought and measure, compare. All right. They all the same, which means that little scratch don't mean jack. The little scratch ain't even riding on the roller bearing of the rocker arm. So it means jack. Now, which means this camshaft is reusable. In fact, the camshaft got reused. Hey, car purling like a kitten. But some guy had a scratch on it, replace it. $350? Is, what do you? Yeah. So my point is another thing, they're talking about um, the fact that I got the caliper or the micrometer from Harbor Freight. I can't believe you're a certified master mechanic and you bought something as sensitive as a micrometer or caliper from Harbor Freight. Like, so what do you suggest I have did? Jumped on the snap-on truck and got that one for $300. Jesus.
just so I can compare the freaking lobes to each other on a pinnacle star camshaft? Is that what you're saying? But guys, there's no norms with me. Okay, I say this all the time. I right? I'm breaking the norms. I right? nothing is normal about what I do. All right, so you know what I'm saying? You can shout it out till you blue in the face. I'm gonna check this stuff the way I do. A lot of stuff we've been led to believe is overkill. Freaking overkill. All right, I'm about to kill all this nonsense to the point where it's not dangerous. No, I'm not finna go Scotty Kilmore on y'all and tell you don't use jacks. No, use some damn jacks. You don't want a damn car to fall on you. But my point is, a lot of stuff not that serious. I'm not gonna spend three hundred dollars for a mic or or caliper or whatever the hell you call it. I don't even care what you call it. I'm not your super professional, Mister Proper English, top ass YouTube mechanic. That's not me. <laughs> I'm gonna be me. I tried that in the beginning. I tried mechanic clothes use the proper english be professional i tried all of that no i was uncomfortable i was in oh man i gotta do another live stream and pretend i'm somebody i ain't no i'm gonna be me damn it i'm me it is what it is player i'm me i'm jt all right i don't know where i'm at in the comment section i do know it's almost nine o'clock uh, i don't know how i got on this stupid rant but what did i leave off at i think i left off uh uh, Dark man, that pilot put five jars and put plugs up that bad. Read them, uh, depending on what's happening. Okay, I know it's a lot of people in the bottom. Been a while, I got banned. Had to create another channel. Damn, dude. Uh, this a girl in here. Oh, this my. Oh, this my dude. Okay, damn, dude. What you do, man? You got put in Facebook jail. You must do something really bad. I try not to piss YouTube off. In fact, I got in some trouble. I got me and this dude in the comment section was. I may have used some words I shouldn't have used. Y'all know me. I try to mask my word. Instead of S-H-I-T, I might write I-S-H. YouTube, like, know what I was saying. I'm like, wait. You can't say I-S-H, I-S-H, J-T. How y'all know what that is? Man, I'm talking slang. Y'all done deciphered the slang. Or oh, y'all got some damn young kid interpreter in the office telling y'all what I'm saying. Yeah, YouTube got a slang interpreter in the office telling them what J-T saying. I'm talking in secret codes. You little punk man, you're F man, you're F boy. I'm like, F boy, blah blah. You don't know what the hell you talking about. And some guy done told you two what I actually said. They sent me a warning. I gotta tone it down. All right. Remember, I used to brag on having thick skin, but I've been letting it slide. So I've been letting some things get through the crack. Man, I don't know. <laughs> I gotta tighten up, but I hate when clowns come to me on the okie doke. All right, especially if you're nobody. Oh my goodness, I can see if you was a a fellow YouTuber with you know, mechanic skills and all that. I hate when guys, they just got a big old letter on their profile picture, just L. Their name is Lanny. It's just an L. Just, I'm looking like, who's this talking all this snake? Nigga, just L. We don't know who L is. I go, let me go see who is this guy, somebody. I click his profile, and he just L. Like, so I'm sitting there arguing with a big ass nobody. Man, get out of here, man. Bring somebody with some damn, something I can compare, something that I can. Go look at his stuff and talk bad about him. Oh, my goodness, man. Y'all be killing me, man. Get up, put out an APB. If you're nobody, don't come talking smack to me, right? I ain't got time, all right? Yeah, I, I don't have the time. I can't entertain you if you're a freaking nobody. Now, you can know something. Let me clarify this. You can know something. Here, this will kill me about guys that I deem nobody. It just got a big B or a big L on their thing. Young buck, I got 30 years experience and I got all the certificates in the world. I'm like, but your profile don't say none of that. For all I know, you could be an imposter. This is the internet, dude. You can say anything on the internet. Like, what? Who are you? I mean, um, everything. I got all that stuff, you little young buck. I say, but again, you're nobody. I stop, JT. Get off of that foolishness. My point is, leave me alone if you're nobody. If you somebody, the dude Jimmy. Just got a J by his name. Just I'm I, just J, nigga. Just J, damn. Just J. He's just J. No, no, no credentials. No nothing. Man. Just J. And I'm gonna talk smack to JT just cause I want some attention. I don't know. <laughs> some guys get on there. Some guys get on there and say the dumbest thing. You know, I'm known for returning comments, right? So let me see if I can get him to bite. Uh, you wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. I see that. I'm going, my spider sense kick in. Wait a minute. Is somebody talking? Is somebody, somebody, 
did somebody just say something? And I go find it, right? I'm like, that's one of those say something to me type comments. That's one of those, I want some attention posts. <laughs> and me, I'm so stupid, I fall for it. What do you mean? I don't know what I'm talking about. Now, I should have just left that alone, right? Like, no, nah, JT, you just just looking for trouble. And in the meantime, guys on there, great video. I'm just totally ignoring their comment. Like, I'm on there looking for beef. What? Somebody got what? what? Who next? What? What's up? Hey, this ain't what you want, player. You know, I'm responding to my positive. <laughs> I got <I'm> <sighs> What the hell I leave off at? Somebody laughing. Who is this laughing? Joshua, I have no idea what's funny, man. Yes, you're welcome. Clutch Shift, America Diesel Company. Michael, what's up, man? Uh, Harold, what's popping? Chasing every now and then, check in. What's going on, man? I put my whole hour in the end. More tests are required. More diagnostic money is required. Yeah. Guys, we, we've been there, too, where we had to ask the customer, look, this is going a little further than we anticipated. We need three-hour diagnostic time. We did that one time, and I promise you, it still end up being 10 days. So at that point, you had a loss. Like, you got to tell the customer, ma'am, it's going to take more time than we expect. You got to bear with us and be patient. Hopefully the customer saying, well, y'all keep it long, y'all get long, y'all find the problem. Some customers like that, especially if it's some dumbass intermittent problem. They're like, uh-uh, y'all keep it because I am not driving that car if it just stall out on me in the middle of nowhere at any time. I don't even want it no more. Drive it till you fix it, baby. Find out. Just go ahead on. It could be three months, six months. I still pay the car note. Just handle your bin. Yeah, some people like that, man. Smoke test, road test on the highway, cooling system analyst, or engine disassembly. More that. Yeah, man. Sometimes it can take more time than anticipated. The car now is rolling computer. It is. It can be 15 minutes or an hour. A lot of software now. Yeah, BDO, rolling computer. Everything is computer control now. My airplane mechanic charges me 150 an hour. We charge 200 an hour. Who dictates the hour? This is the thing, guys. A lot of guys in the comment, that's highway robbery. Nigga, who are you? Like, the owner that agreed to charge 200, I don't think he care about your opinion about that being high. In fact, I know he don't care. So who are you? That's too high. Shame on you. You ought to be shaming yourself. That's all the comments feel with. First of all, I have no control over that. Second of all, again, who are you? Who cares what you think? Shops have to be competitive in their area. If everybody around their area charging 220, 250, 260, and we at 200, hopefully we the most competitive. We're hoping we can draw that. Deep down inside, we know we should go up some more because everybody else is up, right? But we just hanging on. You know, we're not getting any resistance from the two hundred dollar people. They not they've already used to it. They're accustomed to it. Yeah, I know it's two hundred dollars for y'all. Check it out. You told me the last two times. I know. Here, I'm signing it. Go figure out what's wrong with my car. Yeah, they used to that. Now the shock treatment come in when you have to go up some more. Hopefully you can ease into that. So my point is, guys, that price is dictated by the share market. I mean the, the area. Okay. You gotta be competitive in your area. You can't be 200 and everybody else 150 or you lose business. So you got to be, y'all don't understand the competitive market. I don't either from a technical standpoint, but I get it. Okay. Yes. And I said this before I said it again, most of y'all are the only one with problems of the price being 200. Customers are not shocked, especially in this area. In other words, $200 ain't nothing to them. Yeah, that's it. $200 figure out what's wrong with my car. Figure it out. In the meantime, y'all in the comment, oh my God, 200. Y'all live in Alabama, population 100, population 300. Y'all stay down there in Mississippi, ain't but like three or four folks of them, and like five of them are your kin folks. And y'all on there complaining about $200 because y'all local shop down the street is $75 an hour. Bro, you need to stay there, all right? Stay. You can't come here with that nonsense thinking stuff going to be what it used to be back at your home country as town, all right? You living in a different market than hey, I heard a guy in the comments say, you know, we out in California, we 250 an hour. That area demands that type of money. It's a competitive area, obviously. Everybody in that city or that area, okay? It's all about where you live. All right. You can't be living in the country complaining about people in the city paying 
X amount of dollars. You don't live in the city. You live over in the country. Stay in your lane. Mind your freaking business. Everybody in the comment that type that. Mind your freaking business. All right? We got this. <sighs> I don't know why I left off at. I got to go, man. This is, These live streams are getting out of control. Uh, computers, modules, every option, heated, cooler. Yeah, man, it's like, do you know the Chrysler Pacifica has 30 modules on it? 30 freaking module. <laughs> it's five doors on that car, right? You got a left front door module, right front door module, left sliding door module, right sliding door module. The tailgate is even a door. Guess what? There's even a module for that mother sucker. Wait a minute. It's too many damn modules on these cars. It's driving my brain crazy. But that's what separates the, you know, the elite from the, you know, that's what separates the super. You know what I'm trying to say. Mopar Randy, what's up, man? Oh, Dark Man, if you get flat rate, you get the same no matter. That's it, man. It's something you need to talk to the boss. Yeah. I mean, it's it is what it is. Man, what's up, man? Updating my Durango. Oh, no bus. It took, it looked like they can't fix it. What do you think about? Damn, this is 2021. You got a no bus issue and they can't figure it out. Who is they? Hopefully you're talking about a dealership. I had a guy, I had to jump on his ass because he get in my comment section talking about, stay away from the dealership <laughs> if you can help it. I'm like, dude. Now, I have no beef or no problem with guys that work in the, uh, oh, I got some sad faces up there. I got two. I have no problem with guys that work in a in, uh, shop. Dad's Garage, Lakeside Automotive, all you guys. Cool with me. All right. But. This is my opinion. I'm entitled to this. If you got a newer car, you stay in a better chance. Not that Lakes and um, Dad's Garage, them, uh, not not that they can't handle it. I'm just saying, based on the fact that the car is still kind of new, you stay in a better chance of getting it right. You know, they have the proper. And again, not that Lakes and them don't. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, in my opinion, in other words, the guy that made the comment, I had to check him, all right? I was like, dude, you can stay at, don't be advising people not to go to the dealership. They may want their car, you know, I got to be careful what I say. But, yeah, um, uh, mm, I got to get out of here. Tech told me the new Grand Cherokee has one mile, <laughs> one mile a while. How much does it usually cost to fix the Hemi ticket at your shop by book, cam lifter and gasket? Cam lifters gasket, dude. That is what you're perceiving to be the problem. Number one, you don't know if that's the problem. Just because your car ticking doesn't mean you automatically need what he just called out. This car have to be properly diagnosed, my friend. Okay, a Hemi tick or a tick that's attached to a Hemi engine could be a number of things. It's one guy who got tricked by a freaking. Recirculation blend actuator door. That's a hemi tick. No, it ain't dummy. That's a freaking can't say dummy. Sorry, YouTube. If you're listening, I didn't say dummy. I said hummy. I don't want to get censored. Um, uh, my point is that you gotta it's hard to ask answer a question like this because I would be giving I be I would be talking hypotheticals, all right. I don't want to slang out because number one, there's no set amount. It depends on what the guy's doing it. <laughs> it depends on what he's gonna charge, technically. If you're going, if you're trying to figure out what book pays, I don't know that by heart because in some cases we we make up projected amounts. All right. One guy I say it's 10 hours to replace the camshaft and all the lifters. I need head gasket, blah, 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 blah. The book will be close to that, and you know, he'll sell it for that. There's no, there's no more direct answers to anything, guys. I get asked that all the time. How much it costs to do a pin and star tick? It's got to be checked out because there is no direct answer to nothing. I can't just yell out, oh, that's about $15,000. All right, I'm going to take you to the shop. He go to the shop. He come back to the mechanics. Like, That'd be $5,000. Damn, JT said fifteen. JT didn't know we was going to write up an engine. We ain't doing no damn rocker arms. or no. You need an engine here. This place right here? This place right here, you get an engine. You can go to Brothers Motors with all that ticking lifters and rockers and stuff. They might do it for 15. But here, this place right here, stop. Uh, Yeah, so I don't yell out prices no more because you never know, right? Especially if you're not the one going to be doing it. So don't write me and ask me, how much y'all, how much do they, well, how much will this cost to get 
a PCM replace. <laughs> yeah, you just those questions are going away. You can't ask that no more. <laughs> what up? EM, Eric Motion. I got so many theories and suspicions. I'm diagnosed with real knuckle condition. Hold on, yeah, man. It's crazy out there, man. If the customer keeps yelling, you just let them go. Hey, man. It's not my call, but it is what it is. Guys, it's 9 o'clock. I have to go to the bottom because I got to wind this down. I got to take care of some business. I'm sorry. My stupid rants went on too long. I wasn't able to get to all the comments. That boy, D, what up, man? I'm sorry. Um, Trying to become what? Trying to become... No, what did I miss? Oh, what Jason said something. Uh, Mopar Randy must start. Okay. He's talking about it. Be yourself. Paradigm White. That's what I'm talking about. All right, guys, I got to wind this down. Like I said, um, two equipment. Dodge dealerships charge more. <laughs> Dodge dealerships charge more per hour than airplane. <laughs> Again, it's not the. It, it's a lot of it is based on the location, guys. And it's not a stealership. They don't steal nothing from you. They just, because they are a little bit more expensive than your average shop, people tend to refer to them as a stealership. I know it's catchy. It's rhymes. It's, oh, that was clever. That was real cute. That was clever. But it's not the case. Not They're not stealerships. They're your best option in some cases. So, um, yeah, I like to see the same people that be calling uh, dealership stealership but those be the ones that be crying out there down and spend a thousand dollars on the converter that they could have got free if they had at least went and visit a stealership from time to time what do you mean uh i got a recall yeah man you had a recall on this cat but i see you already got it replaced so don't even worry about it dog don't even worry about it you telling me i could have got it free yeah but you remember you call a stealership so we don't we don't even care about you dog just shoot shoot uh yeah i gotta go so listen man uh what are the chances of oh somebody on Facebook? What are the chances of keeping the same transmission? <laughs> Princess Thomas. Man, we're not related, are we? Princess, listen to me, man. The transmission in anything with a 2.7 in it, right? Anything. I don't care if it's a 300 Chrysler 300 Challenger, whatever. Anything with the V6 2.7 in it will be equipped. With a 42 RLE. You know what that is? Rear wheel drive transmission, four speed transmission. All right. None of those engines are equipped with a NAG1 transmission. On the flip side of that, all the 57 Hemis that's in those cars are, in fact, equipped with a NAG1 transmission. All right. So will it boat up? Perhaps it may boat up, but you can't do that. Is too big of a trying to go from a V6 to a V8. It's the most craziest thing you can do. Number one, it's going to cost you way too much money, and you still can have problems. The other, easy other option is just buy a car already equipped with a 5.7 Hemi. We'll talk about that on another video. I can't get in deep off of that. All right. Uh, send three pictures of my week. Damn, man. Why you tell me? Where you send them to? Chain simultaneous. My commission bonus is going to be insane. That's what's up. Jason about to get paid. Jason, where you send them to, man? Did you send that stuff to uh, the Facebook? Jason, I always send me stuff and don't tell me. Uh, where he sent it to? Now I want to see what the hell Jason sent. All right, guys, this is my last function. Jason got me uh, concerned now. Wait a minute. What the hell you sent it, Jason? Is it on Facebook? or Guys, did my internet go down? I did not uh, log out. Uh, hold on. I got to find out. I want to know what, what Jason sent me. Log out. Log in. I'm about to go to, uh, I'm about to go to my Facebook page. Hold tight. In fact, hold tight. And then I, I got to go. Let me do this. What is my password? Wait a minute. Um, automatic login. Is this it? Did you send some here? No, oh, Jason, you didn't send it here. I ain't got no message from you. All right, guys. This is what we're going to do. Hey, Justin Down. Y'all know Justin Down? Oh, uh, Justin been in the jail. Go, G. JD. Justin Down is a YouTuber, guys. That's my friend on Facebook. Y'all know Justin Down, don't you? Uh, Justin got a lot. You talk about CP the 2 addict. Justin Down got some damn enemies, boy. Like I said, he cool with me. Anybody that's cool with me is cool with me. Just because y'all got a beef with him, I'm all right with them. But uh, that's my dude, Justin Down. I thought Jason sent me something. 
Well, they just put any old thing on Facebook. All right, we done with that. We done with this. I'm done with all of this. All right, I got to go. I'll check on Jason later. I'm at the very bottom. Mike P, I just got to talk about your ass. They, ain't no shout out. What you mean? Shout out. No, Mike P, it wasn't a good shout out. <laughs> Mike P, don't man, JT, thank you for the shout out. No, man, what you talking about? If it take three hours, ladies and gentlemen, this is the guy that seemed to think if it takes you more than three hours, you need to find another career. <laughs> My comments are here to revive you. No, no, you meant that. Don't try to, don't try. Mike trying to play both sides. He's trying to straddle the fence. All right. <laughs> you saw those other two comments under you. Mike, I was getting ready to type a long comment on there. I was like, hell no, I'm about to make a short video out of this. But then I ended up talking about it on the live stream. So I'm going to let you slide. But Mike, Mike, hear me out, Mike. Uh uh-uh. uh. Mike P, we got to see eye to eye player. Listen to me. Sometimes it can take more than three hours. All right. Just so you know that. Everybody is not, it don't even matter if you're good. Just a lot of it depends on the problem, right? Have no, nothing to do. And God forbid it's an intermittent problem. You cannot stay on the road all day trying to get a car to stall out. The car going to stall out when it feel like it. There's nothing you can do to induce that until you put in that window. There's a feature on cars now with a um, data recorder. When a problem will happen or checking the light is set, uh, is set, is set the computer would capture what happened when that code set. The problem with, with that car or the one I'm speaking about, there was no check in the light. So I had no data information to go by. So it's all tried to redu- duplicate the problem or get in that window where the problem happened. Problem was, we don't know what the window was because there was no code. So it was a whole mess. But Mike P. Uh, Mike. All right, Mike, I'm going to let you slide, man. Uh, don't let it happen. Look who just showed up in the freaking building. I ain't seen this guy in a long time. Auto repair is way too much money. Scotty with his scan tools take 10 minutes. <laughs> Paul Joe. Paul Joe, ladies and gentlemen, is an OG. What I mean by OG, Paul Joe was around when I had, I'm at 153,000 subscribers now. Paul Joe was around when I don't know, when I was 30, 20. Paul gave me so much freaking problems, so much hell. Paul like Jimmy now. Paul used to tell me, I don't even believe you work in a shop. Prove it. Paul was like one of those skeptical guys. I'm like, I ain't got to prove, prove nothing to you, Paul. I don't even know you, you little chump. Get out of here. <clears throat> Paul kept on to me, do this, do that. You, I suggest you do this. If you want to be a great YouTuber, do this, do that. I mean, he was giving me some good tips, but he was a, a pain in my thorn at times. But Oh geez, it's nothing. I mean, it's nothing. I, I got a, I got a weak spot in my heart for OGs. Like, like I say, this dude been around for a long. When I was twenty thousand subscribers, maybe I can pull up a video, one of my twenty thousand subscriber giveaways, and look in the comment section and see who's OGs that's still out now. All right, yeah, people gonna fall off, people gonna fade off, blah 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 blah. Okay, I'm not saying people will fade away and become inactive that doesn't mean they don't still watch like a lot of people tell me hey man i'm not as active as i used to but i watch every single freaking video you put out man all i ask for is a thumbs up <laughs> you know what i'm saying so yeah a view is good you're gonna be you watching it you're viewing it but a thumbs up helps so i don't get i don't get too caught up in the you know being active active uh lakes out of order will put up a little emoji that i mean you ain't even got to say nothing just Whatever the hell that means. I don't know how you find those or, you know. But anyway, Paul was popping, man. I was popping. I hope everything. Paul is kind of political, too, y'all. So y'all be careful with Paul. He liked them. You know, he one of them hardcore, I think, Republicans. Paul would kill me if I call him a Democrat. But he's really politics. And I'm kind of scared because I try not to inject any politics in this channel because, you know, you can't show a side when you're, when you, when you do stuff like this, you lose half your base if you pick a side. Oh, nigga, I'm uh, I'm independent. I'm straight down the middle. I don't like nobody. How's that? Yeah, y'all like me now, right? I don't like nobody. Okay, so I can keep my fan base on both sides. <laughs> no, I really, that's true. I don't like none of them. Politicians, I hate them all. Right. So, uh, but Paul Joe is one of those uh wicked, like overzealous uh political pundit. You know, he know. Oh, my goodness. This guy is crazy. Anyway, I got to go, guys. That's all. I'm going to speak to Dad's Garage PM. Freeze. Freeze frame. 
That's what I was trying to say. Thanks, Dad's Garage. Yes, uh, freeze frame data can store even if the check in the light is off. No, but it's got to come on first, don't it, Dad's Garage? Like, a code has to be set. Like, why would a freeze frame data trigger if a computer don't see a problem? On the flip side of that is you can have an intermittent install out and not have any codes. That's why I say the newer the cars are becoming, the better the computers. The computers are more sophisticated, so they stand a better chance of picking that stuff up. But back in the day, we had a hard time trying to figure out intermittent stall outs. But yeah, freeze frame was a good tool you had at your disposal if your scan tool would display it. All right. A lot of the scan tools won't give you that option. Okay. Got to go. All right, Octavio, thanks for jumping on. Sometimes a customer clears the code before. Dude, I never thought about that. Damn, you got a point, man. Clears the code before they bring it. Yeah, throw you off, cost them by erasing that. Head. Yes, yes, that happens a lot. Interesting point, man. Messenger app, JT. I don't, what is that? I just left Facebook. You ain't have nothing. You know, I ain't super technical. I ain't, I'm Instagram and all that, but I ain't. Michael Jackson said Republicans buy shoes. Too. <laughs> he keep politics to himself. Great. <laughs> Michael Jackson said that. Uh, Jason, I don't know. I didn't see it. Okay. If you put it in the uh, uh if you put it in uh oh, so that's how it is. Well, what do you mean, Dark Man? I guys, I gotta go. I'm uh it is 917. Oh my goodness. But um Jason, we'll talk about it next week, man. Oh, it's Thursday. All right, guys. Right now, I have to roll. Uh, they can have symptoms and freeze frame will be stored. Same code require multiple consecutive failures to turn the light on. The goal is to keep the customer from experiencing the light if possible. Interesting. Oh, Michael Jordan, not Michael Jackson. Uh, that's, that is interesting. I haven't given that much thought enough to regurgitate it, but, uh, that's interesting. I didn't, like I said, I haven't given that much thought, but uh, thanks for, thanks, uh, Dad's Garage. That's what, thanks, everybody. I have to get out of here, man. Jordan Night Jazz, that's true. Guys, that's all I have. I'll see y'all next Thursday. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe. If you're not already, remember to leave the video a thumbs up, guys. That helps the channel, and I will see y'all Thursday.